Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Welcome back to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast, friends. I'm so excited to have you back today. I hope you've had an amazing week. I hope that your school year is going great. And I hope that by listening into the podcast each week that you feel inspired and just encouraged to keep going and doing what you're passionate about, which is teaching music. So today's interview is with Bill Henry. He is one of the hosts of the Music Podcast for Kids. And we're going to talk a lot about his podcast in my podcast today. But he's going to be talking about bringing podcasts in the music room and some other e-learning ideas when it comes to music and kids. And I told him that even one of my son's teachers and I were having a conversation about her bringing podcasts into the classroom and how the kids really love listening to podcasts nowadays. And so I told him, I think it's a genius idea to start a podcast where kids can listen in about music, especially right now in the time we're living in, when you are looking for so many different ideas and resources to bring into the kiddos' homes and to de- to bring into your virtual lessons or even into your classroom. So this episode will definitely help you in how to do that and will tell you a little bit more about his podcast. But let me tell you a little bit about Bill before we get started. He's been teaching elementary music for 14 years, and he is the 2020 Teacher of the Year nominee for Perryville um, Elementary School in Maryland. He has presented for the Maryland Music Educators Association in Baltimore, giving music teachers insight into a melodica program he created and implemented into his school, which we will talk about more in this episode as well. Alongside teaching in the public school system, he owns a private music studio teaching piano, guitar, and percussion. His group piano program called Rock in the Keys has been featured on the Music Lesson Business Academy podcast with Danny Thompson. He is also the co-host, writer, and producer of the Music Podcast for Kids. It's a show teaching kids about many different topics in music, including world music, instrument families, and more. He also has a YouTube channel offering online piano lessons for kids and resources for music teachers to help teach and recall basic music concepts in their class. And you can find him on YouTube at Mr. Henry's Music World, and you can find the Music Podcast for Kids on YouTube or on any of your favorite music or any of your favorite podcast platforms is what I meant. And you can also find links to those in the show notes as well. So let's jump right in with this episode with Bill Henry. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. I am so excited to be joined today by Bill, and he is the host of the Music Podcast for Kids. So he is going to tell us a little bit more about that, but we're going to talk about a whole lot of other things, too. So, Bill, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. This is cool. So I'd love to just have you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your teaching experience and all those good things. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I, I come from a pretty, uh, rich family background. Both my parents were music majors. And so we were always playing music. Um, and, uh, eventually, you know, as, as uh, I mean, my mom, she was actually my high school music teacher and, so eventually I decided to pursue music, but I, I originally didn't, um, for co- in college, I didn't uh, pursue music education. I actually started as a music business major. Um, 
And as, as I started to go through it, I was like, eh, I think I'm going to add music education. So <laughs> I added music ed and uh, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun with it, especially when I was student teaching. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then after student teaching, then it was, you know, time to look for a job. And so I just put, uh, I put my info pretty much everywhere and landed uh, a job in Cecil County, Maryland. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, but um, was willing to move anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's where I've been for the past 14 years teaching uh, elementary general music. Um, and it was actually this year that we just had, well, that we kind of just had. <laughs> uh, we, uh, I was teaching for, this was my first year doing it. Um, I was teaching elementary music, but then I was also teaching elementary band. So, oh, cool. and, and strings. So that was pretty neat because mm -hmm. normally uh, most of the teachers in Cecil County elementary music are split between two schools. Um, so I was teaching at two schools doing K through five general music for uh, most of the time. But then this year uh, they gave me one school and said, you can teach general music and band and strings if you want. And I said, yeah, that, that'd be great. So it was really nice mm -hmm. to just be at one school and have the whole program. So oh, it was yeah. a lot of fun um, doing that, you know, partially this year, you know, we, yeah. we were, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to next year cause then I'll, feel yeah. like we'll really be able to do it. Well, I guess we'll see. You know. <laughs> so he's saying do it partially because of COVID. And so yes. it felt like a sudden halt almost. Right. Where, yeah. especially I'm imagining with elementary students, you know, I've heard a lot of the middle and high school teachers talk about their experiences with teaching band or choir virtually. Yeah. Did you try to continue with them at all? Or was it just kind of like, we'll pick back up where we left off when I see you again in person? Yeah, there was, there was some attempt. It was, we were doing mostly everything through Google Classroom, which I think most right. people were, right? And, yeah. Um, and one of the things that was kind of explained to us was, we want this to be we don't want to give the parents too much to do. So it was a lot of, these are activities that the students can do mm -hmm. um, that they don't have to do. But, you know, we certainly were trying to keep as much engagement as we could uh, virtually yeah. um, with choir and, and, you know, performing in band. We just did kind of like a, uh, we didn't do one of those virtual concerts where where they send in a part mm -hmm. and try and like piece it all together. We didn't do anything like that, but we did have kids perform and then we just put it in a, a folder and they could all take a look at it, you know, just to keep them playing and singing. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah. making yeah, it, it was fun. fun. Yeah. yeah right. Especially for beginner beginners, you know, you can't yeah. do so right. much when you're not with them. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah, right. Okay. Just thinking, <laughs> think my brain's going there like, Oh, <laughs> kudos to you. <laughs> Okay, so you have a podcast, like I mentioned earlier, called yeah. The Music Podcast for Kids. Yeah. So I want you to just tell the listeners a little bit more about that, why you decided to start the podcast, and yeah. kind of the direction it's going, and all those things. Yeah, okay, cool. So, um, well, it was actually started um, by a, a friend of mine. His name is Bruce Fight, and he is part of the podcast as well. So it's me and Bruce that do it. And, uh, Bruce is a teacher for Cecil County as well. He's an elementary music teacher and we're good friends. You know, we've known each other ever since I started. Uh, he's been there longer than me, but um, yeah, we became good friends. And for years we would just be like, you know, we need to do some sort of podcast. And we never really knew kind of what to do. And it would kind of just turn into almost like a joke, really like, no, oh, yeah, we'll never do that. But, yeah. And we were kind of thinking maybe we could do an elementary music teacher kind of podcast thing. And then Bruce said, you know what, what if we did like a music podcast for kids? Mm. And we were just, and that just kind of clicked it in. We're like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. And so the podcast, and so that's what we ended up calling it, the music podcast for kids. And uh, so the podcast is, um, it's like a show, really. It's a show where, um, you know, we come up with stories and, and we're, we're trying to lace in music education throughout the story. So like um, one of the episodes is about music from Japan. 
And uh, so it's us on a boat tr- going to Japan. And there are characters that are involved, like the, the uh, captain of the ship is, you know, not a very smart person. And he's always making mistakes. And so there's like these mm-hmm. fun, entertaining aspects to it. But then we're talking about instruments from Japan and, you know, describing what those instruments are and what they sound like. So that's a little like idea of how the podcast um, is. It's, it's a show. And then we also do like, we do a music word of the day. um, And we'll, we'll, we do some listening challenges in there as well. So for the Japan one, we have a listening challenge and during that challenge, kids have to figure out if it's a music instrument from Japan or if it's not from Japan. So, you know, things like that. We're trying to give kids a lot of different activities to do while sitting and, and listening and, and learning about music. So mm-hmm. that's, a, that's the basic gist of the, of the show. I love that. No, I was, fun. I was laughing when you talked about the name of the podcast because, I mean, I'm really original with the title of this show too. <laughs> yeah. It is just, I just was saying thing. I was like, I'm just going to call it, a, to call it what it is because I yeah. don't know what else to call it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so I love that. <laughs> no, I was telling you before we even started recording that I think that's great because yeah. uh, my, the story I shared with you is my son's teacher uh, told me that they listen to podcasts in their classroom for mm-hmm. different reading or science or whatever. Yes. And I, I even remember thinking to myself, it'd be really cool if there was a music podcast for kids. Well, lo and behold. Yeah. You know? And so, <laughs> I mean, I know even, I mean, unfortunately, and you know, this is the case too. There are some schools, I can see this, especially next year, unfortunately, where music is cut. And so yeah. being right. able for these general classroom teachers who are like, I don't know what to do with the music right. part of my, you know, it's overwhelming. Right. Yeah. Having something like that, I feel like would be a, a really amazing tool because yeah. they simply push play and the kids are still engaged in music. And right, so exactly. have you seen that happen even with teachers at your school or other schools that you've heard of? Yeah. So we've actually, when this, when the whole COVID thing happened, um, going virtually, mm-hmm. um, this show was actually uh, something that a lot of the teachers in Cecil County were using to keep kids engaged. And actually our supervisor ended up coming to us and saying, Hey, can I use this as uh, lesson plans to distribute? And uh, we said, absolutely. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. And, um, and, and we even heard some other um, like we, so we get uh, one of the things we do a music joke of the day and we have kids send in, jokes it can be any joke i love that um and so and then we'll read them on the show and um we've been getting so when i get those emails i see things from florida i see things from alabama so i see thing you know and they're coming from uh public school emails you know Mm -hmm. so i know that there are other uh teachers i think that are starting to pick up on it and, and use it and um, one of the things that we're actually looking to do is put together some packages um, for teachers, which would have um, the ability to download the episodes. We have videos of it and then lesson plans. And the lesson plans c- can work, uh, you know, for a music teacher mm-hmm. or even for a sub. We're trying to tailor mm-hmm. it towards for those substitutes because that can be a really, really great substitute plan. I've done it before, you know, just, I leave yeah. that for the sub and um, we have it all mapped out. There's worksheets that go with it. So yeah, we're, we're starting to kind of piece that together. I love that. No, music teachers, like you said, even music teachers can use this for sure. sure. Absolutely. Especially while teaching virtually. I know yeah. hopefully going into the fall, it's not as overwhelming, but it still will be. But right. having a resource like this and even just putting it in a lesson plan listen to one of your episodes and kids are still engaged, but then the teachers can ask extension questions based on what the students were learning. Yep. Oh my goodness. I don't think you yeah. understand how great you probably do. And maybe not, but I'm going to tell you how great of a resource <laughs> you guys have provided for yeah, thank you. regular classroom teachers, but music teachers too, who right. are just feeling overwhelmed and just have another thing in their toolkit to say, I don't know what I'm doing this week. All this yeah. technology is overwhelming me. Oh, I could, I could send home a podcast for my kids to listen sure. to. I yeah. can do that. And they feel successful. Yep. Yeah. 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 
yeah so it's uh yeah we're having a lot of fun with it too it's just a mm-hmm. it's a great thing so yeah that's cool yeah so okay so we've talked a little bit about e-learning so yes. i want to ask you what are some ideas you've shared with your students in regards to e-learning so well like i said before the the podcast Mm-hmm. That was really a lifesaver. Um, there was a lot of that going on. But I, I also create, so I have a YouTube channel as well. And on that YouTube channel, I was recording videos. And um, one of the videos that I would give to the kids was a video about meter. So reviewing meter, two, four, three, four, four, four meter. Um, and I, the way that I teach meter is, um, I have this, I, it's an idea I came up with years ago where it's like a music monster and basically you have to fill the music monster up with a certain amount of beats, depending on the type of monster that mm. it is. So if it's a two, four monster, you have to put two beats in each belly and you have to give that an, or the monster uh, different types of beats because you can't just give him quarter notes the whole time, right? Yeah. Because then he'd that'd be eating like broccoli all the time. So <laughs> it's uh, so things like that. I would piece together in a video, and and then I would send that off to kids, and there'd be a worksheet that goes along with that. So that was one big thing that I did. Um, I, I use these animated videos on um, the YouTube channel as well, and um, that's something that I, that I was my go-to. So, and those were videos that I had actually used for a couple years now uh, with a program that I created. And um, so it really came in handy during this e-learning time. It's been oh, for sure. a lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. What um, teaching situation did you find yourself in? Was your, were you strictly digital? Did you have to send home paper packets? Was it like a combination approach or what was your, out of curiosity, what were you asked to do with your we, students? Yeah, we were asked to, it, it was basically Google Classroom. We set up our classroom via Google, sent it out to the kids, and then try and you know, track them as best we can. Um, so yeah, that was it. We were, we were strictly e-learning for Cecil County for Maryland. Mm-hmm. Um, there was no, you know, we didn't have any sort of going back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it was weird. <laughs> yeah. Especially for music teachers. You're so used to seeing your kids create music and right. being able to interact with them. And a lot of it, I feel like it's based on body language of the students and being sure. able to see who's participating. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, doing it virtually, all you can usually see, like, like you and I right now facing each other is your face, you know, your face. Right. And it's hard. I know. It's just hard. You got to just trust that what you have already created with your kiddos is working and that they are still right. learning music, which is the main goal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. So I want to also ask you, you mentioned something to me called teaching the melodica. Yeah. Can, can you tell me what this program is all about? Yeah, sure. So um, for those who don't know what a melodica is, uh, a melodica is uh, an, an instrument that it looks like a little keyboard, but you blow into it. So it's a program that I've been running for a couple of years, and actually I've had um, other schools running the program as well. And basically the idea, so my principal instrument is piano, and I wanted my kids to get some basic piano skills in elementary school. Uh, specifically, I was looking at like third and fourth grade. and to get a keyboard lab hmm. is quite expensive, right? Yeah. yeah. And not only is it expensive, but then you also have to have the space to house it. So I decided to build a program. Well, actually I started to look for a program for the melodica and I couldn't really find anything. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to build a program for it. So love it. Yeah. And it, it actually stemmed from a curriculum that I was already writing for my private studio for piano lessons um, for the very beginner. And um, I basically just, I, I pieced it together as mm-hmm. it's basically like a group piano program. Oh, that's, that's really awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's using the melodica instead, which is a cheaper alternative to, um, to a piano lab. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, the more I did it, the more I felt like this is 
really, this should be an instrument that yeah. kids are doing. This should be at the same level of the recorder of the ukulele because it's, it was so cool because it's easy to store. Kids can move with it. They're learning basic piano skills, but they're also working on breath control. Yeah. So it was, um, it, I've been doing it for a couple of years and noticed that the kids are just doing a much better job with understanding music. It's easier to teach like the steps and skips when you have a keyboard right in front of you. Oh, for sure. So it's linear. Just that, yeah. Yeah. Right. That visual. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a, it's been a really cool experience. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I continue to build on it. I had a new unit this year that I ended up having my fifth graders do, which last year they were, when they were in fourth grade, they did unit one. So I did a new unit this year. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I, it's funny because like, I feel like, you know, those perfect situation moments. And what I mean is I walked into my classroom and there were no xylophones, no rhythm instruments, no drums, but mm. on this shelf in this school, hadn't had music for seven years, but there was all these okay. keyboards boxed up. Well, I started as a oh. piano performance major before I switched to music education and I went, okay, why is nobody using these? Right. When, but like you said, I guarantee you other teachers would have been like, I don't have room for keyboards. And I didn't have room for keyboards, but right. I said, I can't set up all of those, but I'm going to set up four and we're going to use them for centers and yes. I'm going to use them Stations, in a right. rotation or I'm going to use them to send some kids back there to play something and teach them how to while I do this over here. Mm -hmm. And I, all these ideas popped in my head, but I know it does depend on the teacher and it it is I feel like teachers have so music teachers have so much thrown their way that they're like, right. How could I add one more thing? And so right. what right. I would love for you to just share, like what ways have you implemented into the curriculum you're already doing with your students, the melodica or, or the keyboard, for instance, too, if a teacher's thinking about using that. Yeah. So the, basically, I mean, I, I wrote the entire curriculum for it. Awesome. So it, it has um, slide presentations, there are videos. So those videos I was discussing earlier that are part of the YouTube channel, animated mm -hmm. videos, I have videos that go along with that curriculum. Gotcha. So it's all on like Google Slides, made it all on there so that um, I can go from slide to slide and, um, you know, use, use the videos to discuss, you know, reviewing what a quarter note is or the paired eighth notes or, you know, just basic music concepts. And those videos really help out a lot, actually. They, the kids, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they retain the information a lot more because they have something to recall it to. Because I can say, oh, well, do you remember when the paired eighth notes got married? You know? mm. And then that, you know, things like that. So, um, so the way that it, it ties in to the, I mean, I'm following the standards. The right. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, so, and I pretty much just, I got permission to just run with my, with that curriculum. So yeah. I use that. I, I do that for a good two, two semesters really, mm -hmm. so that we can really get into it. Mm -hmm. But it's covering all different types of things. There's oral skills training in there and yeah. um, rhythm reading. And of course, note reading um, and performing together as a group. I have them, you know, there's different layered ostinatos that they're performing and playing together. So there's a lot of different aspects to it. Um, but the Cecil County, we're a quaver school. So we do have mm -hmm. quavers music, which is great. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, you know, we use that. Um, we don't use it exclusively, though. We use it more as a tool. Gotcha. You know, that's, how, that's how we're, um, you know, being told to use it. Like, it's mm -hmm. a great resource, a great tool. But if you have something else you can do, do that. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's how it kind of ties in. I love that you're pulling from different approaches and making your classroom uniquely yours is so important. Yeah. And one thing I love about this podcast is I get to meet so many different elementary music teachers who I have not had any guest on that is the same as anyone else. Right. And yeah. but that's, I mean, but that's meeting elementary music teachers in person or virtually no two teachers do things the same. Right. And that is something I wish I knew when I started out. So I want new elementary music teachers listening to, listening to this to know that 
Yeah. When you're comparing yourself to someone else, think about what I just said. No one else is doing anything the same way. Right. That's okay. I but, know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's I so just, true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You're so right. Because, and I felt like in the beginning when I was first starting, um, this was my 14th year, but when I was first starting, I was like, Oh, am I doing this? Right? You know, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. You, you're like, well, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And then you start to talk to other people. And, and that's what I think is great about mm-hmm. you doing podcasts like this. Cause it's like, we, you really get to hear what other people are doing and you find out that, yeah, they're doing things different, but then they're doing things the same. And it's like, mm-hmm. hey, what I'm doing is what I'm doing is pretty cool too. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really great. And then yeah. you get ideas, of course. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I love that. And it takes a while, would you say, to find your teaching style and what fit, what's the right fit for you? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I think it takes, honestly, I think it takes a good five years yeah. to really like kind of figure it out. And then you find out later that, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that, you know, <laughs> but it's part of the, it's part of the deal, right? It's just, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's trial and error. Getting in yep. there and doing it is the best way to learn. Yes. And uh, I love that you said that because it's so true. One thing about elementary music is there's not, there are curriculum maps, lessons, of course, that's all out there. But mm-hmm. where my sister, for example, has an elementary teaching degree and she's taught third or fourth grade, but they will walk in and go, teach this for reading, teach this for science, teach this for math and music. You're like, oh, okay. there's your music room. And you're like, well, what do I do? What, yeah. what do I do when and how and who with what grade level? And that's what's overwhelming, I feel, is yeah. there's not a more now. But yeah, when I graduated like back in the olden days, it was the same way. I'd walk in and be like, but did you have like the spotlight on music series too? Like, was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, yeah. It was laid out page some. by page. But I was still like, <laughs> right. I don't want to go in sequential order. That's just not my style. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, Bill, I have loved this episode. Is there anything, any advice that you could share with elementary music teachers listening that something that's worked for you or maybe like just that they could continue doing or giving themselves grace or anything like that? You know, I think the thing you have to really do is you just have to have fun with it. I felt like there was a point in time where I wasn't, I felt like I was following the book and I wasn't able to be as creative as I wanted to be. And I was starting to kind of like, uh, but then, then something kind of switched in me and I, I started to create things that I could use for my classroom. And I think that really helped me for the past, probably now six years, hmm. you know, just being creative and using your creativity. Cause you know, every music teachers, they're creative, right? We're creative. Yeah people. So to use your creativity, I think is the best thing you can do. It's going to give value to your students, to your school. And by doing that, you're going to have this great reflection on you as, you know, oh, look at that, look at what that music teacher is doing. Mm-hmm. And that I think is, is part of the thing that we have to do in order to make our subject valuable in society, you know? Yeah. So just being, just being creative, I think that's the best thing you can do, which is also fun, right? So that's mm-hmm. going to be, that's going to be the fun thing that you get to do with it. So mm-hmm. I yeah. like that. Yeah. And I've said this before, I feel like music teachers, a lot of times start slowly losing their musician side. Yeah. Not on purpose, but mm-hmm. when you said, we're still creatives. It's so true. Uh, you know, think about going through college and all the juries you had to do in recitals and you were a musician, you contain, and then it was when you got Mm -hmm. in your classroom, the shift happened where the teacher side kind of took over and yes, you're still making music with your kids, but I feel like it's so important to not lose the musician side of who you are because that will transfer to your classroom. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, yeah, I think being able to create things, gives you that, you know, that, uh, that thing that maybe you were, that you did have in college, right. Mm-hmm. Where you're preparing this music and you're putting your own interpretation on the music and, um, you're doing all kinds of creative things. Right. So yeah, to, to be able to continue with that 
is going to keep that spark alive and keep it fun. Mm, That's good. Yes. So tell everybody where they can connect with you and find you online. And I will yeah. include all the links you have mentioned in this show in the show okay. notes as well. Yeah. yeah, cool. So yeah, well, the music podcast for kids, um, there's, we have that as a YouTube channel as well. But of course, it's in you know, Apple Podcast and all the different podcasts, Stitcher mm-hmm. and all those. Um, so uh, I feel like with podcasts, though, and maybe you could tell me, it's, it's kind of hard to find things. <laughs> In podcasts. Am I right? Yes. Like, what is that? Yeah, right. It's like, where do you send people, right? Yeah, it's like, it is kind of strange. But we do have a website. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. To the website. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> website is, fails. yeah. Uh, so, that website is the music podcast for kids.com. Perfect. Um, so, there's that. And then uh, also, uh, if you go to Mr. Henry's music world.com, that's my website. And on that, website there's a uh, links to youtube channel and um and you can find find me on youtube as well and those i've had a lot of teachers using those um animated videos i was talking about mm-hmm. in their classrooms so that can be a great resource as well so yes. yeah those two spots yep Perfect. Okay. Well, you guys make sure to connect with him and I appreciate you being a guest and this has been an awesome conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the elementary music teacher podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the elementary music teacher community Facebook group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.